What makes this problem different from 12 is we don't have the same trig function inside and outside anymore. So if we don't have the same thing, we can't apply those rules we talked about earlier. So therefore, this requires a, a different process. We want to find the exact value of this one. And what you're going to do is we need to draw a triangle that's based on that. The inside trig function is what you're going to use to draw the triangle. The outside one is what you're going to use to get your answer once the triangle is drawn. Now, we have an inverse tangent, so we have to talk about what quadrants inverse tangent is in. So, uh, inverse tangent of x is in quadrant, okay, so this one is going to be 1 or 4. Okay, so inverse tan is, in, is these are the rules that come from the, from the uh, uh, lecture notes. Inverse tan is, from, is quadrant 1 or 2. Uh, we also have rules for inverse sine and inverse cosine, so you want to know those rules as well. But inverse tangent is what we have in this particular problem. We know that the triangle can be drawn in either quadrant 1 or 4. Now you're going to decide whether it's in quadrant 1 or 4 based on the sine that you have here. If that's positive, then you're going to draw it in the first quadrant. If it's negative, we have to draw it in the fourth quadrant because out of those two quadrants, the fourth quadrant is the one where tangent is negative. Okay, so we're going to draw the triangle in the fourth quadrant like that. Your angle would be uh, right here. This inside here, we can say that because uh, the inverse tangent, uh, the inverse will always give you an angle, we can say that theta is equal to inverse tangent of negative 3 over square root of 7, just like that. If we apply a tangent to both sides, that tells us that tangent theta is equal to negative 3 over square root of 7. So you would just apply a tangent to both sides. If you have tangent of inverse tangent, that would cancel and give you uh, just this. So because this equivalent statement says tangent theta is negative 3 over square root of 7, that means we can label the triangle that way by using the definition for tangent. Definition for tangent is opposite over adjacent. Since the theta is here, it's always measured from the x-axis, the opposite side would be this one. And so uh, we'd have a 3 here over the adjacent square root of 7. Now one of these has to have a negative because the negative is out front, but because this number here is below the uh, x-axis, that one has to be negative. So, we, so from that, we have square root of 7 and we have negative 3 is going to go down below. Again, opposite over adjacent. We've got to find the missing one because the definition for secant involves the hypotenuse. So we need to find that one. We can find the hypotenuse by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to do uh, the C is the one that's missing, that's the side opposite the right angle. So we're going to put square root of 7 squared plus negative 3 squared, and we're solving for uh, the C that's there. If we square this, we're going to get rid of the radical and you get 7. This one, negative 3 squared, you get 9. And then you're left with 16 equals C squared. Square root of 16 is going to be uh, 4 the hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So that's going to be a positive 4. Okay, so this, we did everything here. We used the inside one. Inverse tangent quadrant 1 or 4, it's negative, so we drew it in, in the fourth quadrant. We found all the missing sides. The final thing we're going to do is we're going to use secant to actually write uh, the answer. Okay, so the answer to this problem, we're going to read that off, use the definition for secant, and use that on here. The de definition for secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. That's the definition for secant. So you use the outside one to get the answer. So that's going to be 4. Okay, so 4 is a hypotenuse over the adjacent, which is square root of 7. And because we have a square root on the bottom, we're going to rationalize it. We'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 7 over square root of 7 and we'll get 4 square root of 7 over 7, this would be the exact value. So again, whenever it asks for exact value, you do not want to put a decimal. You want to make sure your answer is written as a, a fraction. Uh, any square roots, you leave that in as part of your answer.